Hello, I'm James Barth, and today I'd like to tell you about our Rock Hard 4x4 skid plate system that we make for the JLs and the JT trucks. Now, there's a little bit of motor mount differences between the four cylinder and the six cylinder and the, and the Gladiator trucks, and so we have a bracket change that we'll show you between the different ones, but the skid plate system is pretty much the same throughout all of them. It's available in quarter inch aluminum and 3 16 steel. Now, a couple of the things that set our skid plate system apart from others. When we originally were designing the skid plate system for the JL over the JK that we've been building since 2007, we ran into a couple problems. And one is the distance between the front axle or the front of the oil pan to where the cross member is with the new eight speed transmission, it moved the cross member further back in the Jeep. This making what we would originally have as the oil pan skid longer. When we originally built this, we designed it with that oil pan skid longer. And we went out and did quite a bit of testing and we weren't able to get the strength that we needed to give you an adequate system with that. So what we did is we went back and sat down and we re-engineered the skid plate system to what we've come with now, which has these dual cross member systems in it. So what we've added is, if you look right here, we've added this one inch by two inch solid steel piece of cross member. Not a tube, but a solid piece of steel. We've machined it and drilled it and tapped it where needed. And this has allowed us to get the bracing that we need so that we can give you the strength that we need. The oil pan skid is now shorter, and then we have this full belly pan that goes across the complete center of your Jeep. This making a, a coverage far superior than to anybody else in the industry and what you are needing on your Jeep. Then you have a resonator skid and your fuel tank skid. They're available for your four-cylinder Jeep, your six-cylinder, two-door, and four-door, and gladiator truck. Now on the four-cylinder skids, there is an additional skid that goes right here that it covers that big battery pack area that you have underneath. It's right out in the open, and if you put your Jeep over a big boulder, you're going to be knocking into that battery system. We don't want that to happen, so we built this skid plate system. We're going to go ahead and show you how to install this on each of your vehicles. Okay. Now that we have our four-cylinder four-door up on the rack, we're going to go ahead and remove this factory cross member along with this brace this brace and this cross member. We will do that using an 18 millimeter socket. Use a 13 millimeter socket and remove the two nuts by the fuel tank and the two that are on the cross member in this area. Leave this shield in its place and remove this cross member. You, were, you will reuse these two nuts on our cross member. The first component of which we're going to install is the rear cross member to the belly skid. This we will mount with the two nuts we just removed off of the fuel tank. Now, you want to bring the factory bracket below the cross member and go ahead and bring these bolts, leaving them loose, but just bringing them enough to hold the cross member in place so that you'll be able to shift the cross member side to side so that you line up these bolts on the outside. You're going to locate the two bolts that are used at the back of the belly pan skid. They are both a 12 millimeter bolt. One is a silver bolt that is longer and one is a black. You're going to go ahead and put the black bolt in place on the driver's side. Go ahead and start that a few threads and the thing on the passenger side. Then you will tighten these two bolts here at the fuel tank. These are the only two pieces of hardware that you're going to tighten until the complete belly pan system is in place. Now go ahead and remove these two bolts. It was kind of hard to film and hang this at the same time, but we went ahead and hung the cr this belly pan by the center bolt in the factory cross member. Do that by using one of the 12 millimeter bolts and a tapered washer. You just want to get a few threads tightened so that you can move this around. Now we're going to go ahead and install on the driver's side one of the black 12 millimeter bolts with a tapered washer. 
going in through the skid plate, through the cross member into the frame, and on the driver's side, we're going to use the silver bolt that we had a second ago, along with a spacer. So you're going to put the bolt, the spacer, through and up into the cross member. Now we're going to install the front cross member. You will bring the, the belly pan down, slide it into place. You take the 12 millimeter bolt with a tapered washer and install it in each outer corner, once again, leaving all hardware very loose. Next, we're going to go ahead and bring the oil pan up in place. We will ins bring it up, install it at the cross member using the two half inch bolts with tapered washers. Now locate the, heart, the bolt with the tab welded onto it that goes in the side here. You're going to bring it up from the top and drop it in place and bring the arm up to it as here and install the nut. This driver's side is a little bit tricky also. You have a plate with a nut welded on it. That plate is going to slip on the inside of this back area. Then you will insert the bolt from this side through the bracket and into the nut. Make the connection with the arm to the skid plate with the half inch bolt with the lock nut on the inside. We're going to use an 18 millimeter socket and remove the bolt on the back side of the fuel tank. Now, one thing is we will be removing three of the bolts that hold the fuel tank in place. If you do one of the brackets at a time, your fuel tank will not move. Now we've went ahead and installed the bolt that holds this hanger in place. We'll go ahead and position the hanger and we're going to go ahead and bring the bolt, not 100% completely tight, but we're going to bring it up snug using a 19 millimeter socket. This rear bracket is the one that has the taper towards the upper side. Now we're going to remove the bolt by the fuel tank by the right rear tire. You will remove it using an 18 millimeter socket and you will install a bracket and bring the, our new bolt with a 19 millimeter socket. This particular bracket is very similar to another bracket used on the fuel tank but it only has one bin on this upper end. Now we're removing the fuel tank bolt on the right beside the drive shaft in the center of the fuel tank using our 18 millimeter socket. We will remove the bolt and install the bracket. Now this bracket is the one that has a bend on both ends as you can see here. Before you install the fuel tank, we need to remove the two mounting bolts on this side. Now we're going to go ahead and slip the fuel tank in place. It will slip in between the belly pan and the cross member and we will go ahead and start one or two of these bolts to hold it in place. Now that we've set the fuel tank skid in place, we'll go ahead and make connections at our braces using the 3 8 bolts and nuts included. Now we're going to go ahead and install the fuel tank skid up in place. You will do it by using the 3 8 bolts, a washer, and the nut. Now we went ahead and put the middle strap on also. You can use the bolt going inward or outward. It's kind of sometimes easier if you put the nut on the outside. Now we're going to go ahead and install the straps for the hangers for the battery pack slash resonator skid. Go ahead and remove one bolt at a time and install a hanger with the supplied hardware. The reason you do one at a time is this is the hanger for the battery pack. These hangers are identical. They're the same shape and only have one bend at the top.
Now we're going to go ahead and install the resonator slash battery pack skid. And when you do that, you're going to bring it in at an angle. So this goes around that side and then up. You will secure it to the outer edge of the frame using the 12 millimeter bolts. Now we will go ahead and install the other 12 millimeter bolt at the side frame. And then we will install a carriage bolt here and a carriage bolt here. After you've secured the outer edge with the 12 millimeter bolts, now we will attach it to the straps hangers in the back. Bring the skid plate up in place and align with the hanger. We have installed nuts on the back side of this plate so you can take the 3 8 bolt and thread into it. Now we will go secure the front of the skid plate on the battery resonator side. We're going to go ahead and install the carriage bolt on the driver's side with the nut on the top. Now go ahead and get the other carry, half inch carriage bolt and nut and install it on the other side. Now we need to align this bracket with our opening and we'll do that with a punch. And install our other bolt. We're going to use a 15 16 socket and a 13 16 socket. This will allow us to move the nut on the inside of the control arm on the driver's side to install the last of our skid plates. Now remember, we're only removing the nut, not pulling the bolt. Now we're going to go ahead and place the skid plate on the control arm. Go ahead and install the nut. Line up the two bolts here. You will take the nut plate and you see how there's a narrow side and a wide side. The narrow side goes towards the outer edge of the skid plate. You'll go ahead and put that in place, lining up the holes and take your Allen head bolt and install it. Now you use a 732nd and go ahead and bring those up. Now that you have installed the oil pan with the brackets to the motor, the front skid here on the drive shaft side, the front cross member, the rear cross member, the belly pan skid, the fuel tank skid, and the battery pack resonator skid. There's going to be two bolts that are going to go right here in the center along the factory cross member, right next to where you installed the first bolt that held the belly pan skid in place. Go ahead and install those two bolts and go ahead and start tightening the belly pan system in place. You want to start with the two bolts here in the center that are on the oil pan skid, one on both sides, and then you will start at the outer edge corners. You want to bring these about halfway up and then the outer ones and alternate back and forth between all the bolts as you bring the whole skid plate system up evenly to the end edge to the frame. One of the most important things that you can do when you're bringing this belly pan system up when you're tightening it is not to use an impact wrench. The reason is, is I want you to bring up each area, whether it's the corners and the center at the factory cross member or at the back here, I want you to bring it up slowly with a few turns here and a few turns here so you bring it up evenly. The reason is, is you're bringing two big cross members and a complete belly pan that spans the whole width of the Jeep up at once. And when you tighten one individual corner because of the size of it, it will really throw off the other side. So make sure, please, no impact wrenches, bring it up slowly and evenly and you'll be much happier with your install.